you see these two beautiful arboreal enclosures. We will start from scratch and I'm gonna show you how I set them up. I'm actually super hyped to set up these enclosures because that will bring me a step closer to finishing this terrarium wall behind me because I'm in the middle of process of converting all of my old enclosure designs into new enclosure designs. You see, uh, these two enclosures look the same like this with uh, this type of door, but then I switch it up with this more modern and more durable and more pretty. So once I set up these two enclosures, I will be able to move into them uh, Elvira, the Pezzoteria Ornata, which is my probably the biggest arboreal tarantula. And I will also move this Pezzoteria, this is Pezzoteria Sufusca. She's also kind of huge. But then once I move these two, I will be able to convert this enclosure into this style. And then I will move this Pezzoteria Fasciata. You see, she's right there not happy about me opening the enclosure, I will be able to move her into this enclosure and then all of my arboreal enclosures will be the same and they will look sweet. I'm also in the process of converting my terrestrial enclosures, but I'm actually doing that off the video. You see, I converted these four and I converted these two in the video, but I also converted this all enclosure. So that is why I'm hyped to do these enclosures. But there is a catch in today's video because one enclosure will get standard styrofoam backgrounds. That one looks just like this, you see, once it dries and they paint it with black color and yellow color. But the other background for this enclosure will be a bit more interesting because not only that I will have a real wooden log inside that I actually used to have in other Pezzoteria enclosure, but in order to secure this wood and make the background, I'm gonna use the dirt. Same thing as I'm currently doing in the junglearium. Let me show you. I haven't had an update in quite a while, but I think that soon I will make a video. Uh, you see, I have this giant log and this, this is securing that log and this is just a dirt that I dug outside and I think that my dirt got a bit of clay inside so that's why it sticks like this really good but you see that easily I can use the dirt as the background as I'm currently working on here. And also while speaking of junglearium, look, I added the ventilation and these two holes are passive ventilation, but these left and right ones are active ventilation. And if I bypass the switch, you see this turned on. And when this is turned on, it means that this is also turned on, you see? I have fans inside blowing fresh air and with this thing, I can regulate the speed of the fans. So yeah, they are currently on the timer and they will turn on depending on the humidity and misting and fogging schedule. Hopefully by the end of this month, I will have new update video ready. Now let's get down to business. The way of using the dirt as the background is actually super simple. I just, you see, position the wood where I want it to be. I take already prepared bucket of wood and I just dump it in. Oof. Or maybe dumping it in wouldn't be the best, the wisest idea, so I will just use something else, just a second. I'll use this smaller bucket so I have more control, of course. I'm gonna add a cork bark tube here, so I fill this spot. Just like any other thing, there is a downside to this technique, and that is the added weight. The dirt that I apply is really, really heavy and it adds a lot of weight, not to mention how there is already a lot of weight because of the wood, the real wood. So that is one of the downsides. And also a bit of cork bark here. And to fill this hole, I'm gonna just put a flat rock. So even more weight. <laughs> And that is it. Now all I need to do is let it dry out so that way it can harder. That means one time jump and you see this is what I was talking about. The dirt dried and is now keeping the wood in place and also this cork bark tube you see everything is fixed and nothing is moving. So I really like the appeal of this but as I said the only downside is this enclosure is now super heavy and now it is heavier than this enclosure with fake background will be when fully set up with all the substrate and plants and all that stuff. This is already way heavier and now we need to add the substrate and plants. You see, here I have plants ready. Honestly, I don't know what is, what is the name of these plants. So if someone knows, this is plant one, this is plant two 
and this is plant three so if there is someone more knowledgeable in the comments please write me the names of these plants i am pretty sure that they are uh, suited for these enclosures but it would be nice if someone could write that down these two plants will go into this enclosure while i will put this single plant inside of this enclosure so yeah first let's set up that the fake background enclosure because in this one i will house the pezzoteria ornata and i want to leave her for last uh, I have, oh also i didn't even show when we turn the enclosure we will be able to peek inside of her hide you see and if you're wondering what the hell is this uh, this is the silicone that was holding the background in the previous setup maybe i should have removed that but now it is too late as a hide i will use this cork bark but i'm not sure if i want to turn it like this or maybe like this because if i turn it like this then a lot of light will go into the tarantula's hide but if i turn it like this i will have kind of hard time feeding her because it'll be hard to access and see where she is maybe something in between yeah i'll just turn it like this you see that should be the best compromise uh substrate classic mixture cocoa fiber spe not sphagnum moss peat moss and potting soil i just can't shake the feeling that there is some better substrate combination than this but i don't know i tried a lot of different stuff and nothing feels like totally right you know okay i think that this should be enough but now after i compressed it hmm nah it should be fine i can add the plant adding plants to the enclosure is the second best feeling to adding the the animals because plants just add that something to the enclosure even though in this case the plant is fairly small and of course i expect that it will uh, cover this background like in like six months or up to a year so currently it doesn't really look that dramatic but yeah it got the potential to just be gorgeous in the future leaf litter i just love using these leaves as a leaf litter these smaller ones because they kind of fit better in a smaller enclosure than those big leaves that i used to use now mix it up a bit maybe some branch something like this here in the corner just to fill it up a bit although not a game changer but now i have something super extra and i actually waited for like a month to use this because someone from iceland sent me sand and a lot of it not only that i received this volcanic rock also from iceland of course and look at the sand it is black check it out what an awesome sand completely black and this one is fine while this one is a uh, slightly coarse so i have a letter here it was sent to me by oscar and thank you man for sending me this although you really you definitely didn't need to send me this much i mean just a small while would be sufficient because i know that uh, shipping stuff is expensive when you are shipping something heavy and this was like super heavy together with rock yeah thank you man now i'm going to use this in this enclosure as a texture you know that i love to use sand for the texture although this being black i'm not really sure if we will be able to even see it inside yeah i see it is super dark <laughs> i can like scatter it around and i think it is adding some texture although you see it is clamping up like okay hmm not bad not bad is it making enclosure better certainly for sure <laughs> now if some of you watching this video also want to send me a uh, sand for the texture to use in my future builds feel free to do that down here you will find an email so send me an email and we will we will arrange that if you have some cool sand for the texture and i will use this in one of my enclosures although i'm not sure in which one maybe some de no not desert it would be actually cool to put in some enclosure that contains some orange tarantula so it is fitting like you know uh, lava is orange and this is a lava rock so mm, king baboon maybe <laughs> they are like the most orange tarantula okay this enclosure is now red no it is not it is not we need uh, springtails a little bit of cleanup crew for the enclosure so yeah and not only that i will add springtails but i will also add some isopods i have a lot of isopods here they are just hiding you see bunch of them so yeah just a tiny scoop like enjoy little buggers 
eat all the nasty stuff from the inside. <laughs> all the tarantula poop and food leftovers, you know, mold, fungi. In theory, they should eat all. Now with the enclosure ready, we can add the tarantula, but I love seeing these isopods exploring the environment, you see. It definitely makes the enclosure alive. And you see up here, uh, in the meantime, I just had to add this additional light to shine the enclosure here because I felt like it is a bit too dark, I don't know. Let's grab the tarantula. For the past like two years, she lived inside of this plain looking enclosure. And the reason for that is I had some mold issue, so I couldn't water the enclosure. I wanted to drop the humidity. And in process of doing that, all the plants died. And now the enclosure just looks super sad, you see. Wah, 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 wah. As I said, this is the Pezzoteria Sufusca. You see her on the cork bark. I think that I will just do a really simple rehouse where I just poke her on the back, but not with my fingers. Never poke pokey with your finger because their bite can be dangerous although this one is a bit passive hey buddy are you okay oh. Oh, yeah she's fine she's just being a bit stubborn trying to ignore me thinking that by doing that i will just leave her <laughs> but no you are getting a brand new enclosure and you are going to love it you really don't have a choice. Why are you so slow and the tarantulas are either super bolty or like holding their ground, but huh, this was incredibly easy and simple. One of the smoothest rehouses so far. Do you like the enclosure? Look, you have some bodies moving around. <laughs> they are going to keep you company. Um, great, mission complete. I'm super successful, I need a top. Definitely something that I shouldn't forget. So just slide it in, close the door and that's it. Voila, one done. Easy peasy. On the shelf you go. <laughs> now let's set up the better enclosure. And this enclosure is intentionally prettier because inside I will keep uh, Elvira and she's the biggest, probably the biggest Petzalteria in the Dark Den. And for quite a while she was the biggest Tarantula in the Dark Den. But now since Linda molted, she's now definitely bigger. Thankfully Pokey's got small abdomen, otherwise she couldn't enter this hide. Uh, Linda definitely couldn't fit her, her booty through this hole. But Pokies are arboreal, so they need to be a bit more nimble than terrestrial tarantulas. In theory, this, this plant should climb, so I will like try to plant it in the way that it can just continue growing up. Hmm, I should actually fixate her to the back. Just a second, I need to figure something out. I use this poking stick, you see? to fix it in the back and then later the plant should attach herself using these roots you see like here and here yeah hopefully it will work out and i'm so tempted to plant this plant inside of the cork bark although i'm not sure how that will should i risk it <laughs> it's better looking for sure yeah i'll give it a go I just need to add more substrate inside i only worry that the substrate will dry too quickly inside of the cork bark but I don't know, I will keep an eye out and if there will be some problems, I will replant the plant because I really can't resist having a plant like this look. It is looking so sweet, right? And with leaf litter, it will only get better. I'll also add some inside of the hide. Looking good, looking good. And some here behind the plant and here on top. A sprinkle of Icelandic sand for the texture. I'll scatter it on the bed. Oh, only it would hold better. You see, this is actually looking really nice. <laughs> Springtails and isopods. Go, go, my fellows. Which completes the enclosure. And now it is a tarantula time, of course. Her enclosure is also super heavy. And that is, of course, because I used the same dirt, you see. I secured the cork bark with that dirt and I used it as the background. The tarantula is right there. <laughs> she always seems so small because she's usually so clamped up like this. Now getting her outside can be interesting because I'm pretty sure that she won't be so passive on the pokes, you see? <laughs> yeah, she's like 
Get that thing out of my face. <laughs> hey girl, you really don't need to be so mad. I have something. I mean, her enclosure is not bad, the appearance of her enclosure, but the actual enclosure is really bad because you see this broke, there are these black thingies and the magnet is not holding well so I am forced to keep it secured with a tape. It is definitely time to retire her enclosure. So that is why I need a little bit of cooperation, please. <laughs> She's just not having it. So mad, mad, mad. Such a mad tarantula. She just need to add the madness that we didn't get from the Sufuska. That is the only logical explanation. And she's biting the straw so bad, you see? Now imagine if that was your finger. It really wouldn't be a fun thing. If I only can get her to move out. There we go. There she is. <laughs> I have an idea. And now just a simple stroll. Yes, yes. Come on, please continue that way. <laughs> Still mad. Usually they calm after a minute or so, but she just continues to be mad. There we go. Now it also would be cool if you wouldn't destroy immediately that plant. Like go a bit somewhere else, you know. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the isopod is strolling over there. <laughs> but okay, I think that I won't be poking her anymore because she's definitely not thrilled. But yeah, that is the Elvira. Yeah, you see that she is fairly big. But the unfortunate thing is, uh, majority of their size comes from their legs. So when they are like this, when they are not fully stretched out, they really don't seem that big. Kind of average, but they are. She's like 20 centimeters or so. Okay, this was it. Let me just put her at her spot. I actually want to put her enclosure in this corner because her enclosure is so heavy. I don't want to put it in the middle. Since her height is oriented on this side, it makes more sense to put her in this corner than into this corner. And also over here, it will be easier to observe her than here. So let me just do a little bit of switching around. And now there should be enough space. Oh, oh yeah, this is so good. It is the ultimate pokey shelf with three pokies visible outside. This Pezzotere Rufilata is out and the two that we just rehoused. Only the Regales is hiding and that is for now. During the night she is usually out also. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. Now also the another thing that I love I love that I don't have just um, one plant species in all of my enclosure. Four enclosures, five different plants and I have the same in this one and in this one, but this is unique and also this plant is unique. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven enclosures, seven different plants. Nice. So I hope you do. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. Upload on Monday, sometimes on Friday. So see you again soon. Bye.